Bună ziua, bine ați venit! Well, welcome to part two of Romania Miscellanea. Um, I should start by saying I forgot to say something yesterday about the wedding, uh, which is the removal of the veil um, at the uh, banquet, at the meal. Uh, the bride's veil will be removed and um, she'll be given a scarf instead. And uh, she throws the bouquet, much as we do in England, and the young girl who catches the bouquet uh, will be the next to be married. So that's something I, I should have mentioned uh, yesterday about Romanian weddings. Um, uh, okay, well, I've, I've got another ten uh, items. Well, that's the first one, so I've got another nine items to discuss about differences between the UK and Romania. And uh, several people have asked me, well, don't you get lonely here uh, in Romania? And how do you get to know people in the area? Um, to be honest, uh, no, I, I don't get lonely at all. Um, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm quite an insular person. I, I don't think I am. Um, I think I'm fairly outgoing and... Uh, something of an extrovert perhaps um i think you have to be if you're an ex teacher or an ex lecturer as i was um so i think as long as you say hello to people and uh, get to know them get to know your the people on your scada on your in your block and in your area in your quartier you, you you're not going to want for friends here especially in altania altanians are, are tremendously welcoming warm people uh, they have this reputation and uh, I've certainly found it uh, to be the case so uh, do I miss the UK no I mean I have family in the UK my children live there my mother lives there but um, no I, I don't I don't miss uh, miss people in the UK I, I have uh, I have friends here and uh, that will that will do for me it's nice sometimes to go back to the UK and reconnect with people. Uh, it's always lovely to see some of my friends in Winchester, um, but I, I don't I don't miss my life there at all. Um, I think uh, how, so. How do you make friends here? Well, I've I've already suggested that um, learning the language is a key element because you just can't assume that everyone will speak uh, English, especially. If they're of an age, I mean, I'm 61, and uh, most 61-year-olds do not speak English. Um, it wasn't part of their education, and if they live here, they've got no need to speak English. If you work in a bar or a restaurant, you probably have to uh, speak uh, uh, some English to cope with the tourists. But otherwise, um, learn the language, and then you can communicate and, and learn to make jokes in the language. Um, the in the UK we have a, a fairly ironic sense of humour which pokes fun at our own culture. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do that here as a foreigner um, because I think you have to respect the culture you've moved to. Um, if if Romanians want to make fun of Romania, then that's fine. But uh, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take that step. So be non-judgmental about the society you're in. Uh, everyone will sympathize with you if you're talking about bureaucracy or problems with traffic and driving, etc., etc. But appreciate the culture you're living in and take, uh, take the positives from your life here um, and then you, you, you won't go far wrong. Okay, my next um, topic is preparing for winter and there are two <laughs> I suppose two aspects to this. The first is my, my wife's been on holiday recently and we went to buy some verze, some uh, cabbage. <clears throat> and uh, we have a betch here, um, a cellar, where we store the cabbage in a butoi, in a, um, a barrel. Uh, it's a 60 litre barrel and it can take about 14, 14 cabbages. So... Um, she prepares the verze in apa sarata in salted water and adds uh, do porumb uh, to uh, sweet corn, uh, hran, 
horseradish, various herbs, and some people add quince or gutoi. Um, I don't know if she did or, or didn't uh, because I haven't seen inside the, 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 the barrel recently. You you put your 14 verze into the butoi, you add the salted water, uh, you weight them down with a wooden top and some stone and every so often she goes down and uh, with a pipe blows water, uh, sorry blows air into the water uh, to, to move it around a little bit. And this is this is something of an obsession in uh, in in Romania. I think we paid three layer kilo for our verze, which is quite a good price. It can go down to two fifty. It can go up as far as four. And um, why do we pickle cabbage like this? I mean, the Germans would call it sauerkraut. The the French would call it choucroute. Um, well, it's to make sarmale. It's to make those little um, rolls of uh, cabbage around meat and rice, which are essential for any Romanian festival. And we're coming up to Christmas, so it'll be essential for Christmas to have sarmale. And they are very good. The origin of sarmale is actually Turkish. It came from the Ottomans uh, when they... Uh, uh, were in Romania for a while. So it's originally a Turkish delicacy that's been taken over by the Romanians. Uh, in the summer you can have them with vine leaves, wrapped in vine leaves as the Greeks do. Um, but uh, they, they're extremely tasty and these 14 cabbages will last all, uh, all winter. It, it will be enough for us. I talk about gutoi, uh, quince. We don't really eat quince in the UK anymore. We don't seem to have many quince trees. Um, you can make a quince jelly, I suppose, quince jam. Here, um, also, tsuika de gutoi. Tsuika is the, the brandy, normally plum brandy, but um, the, the quince variety is also very good which I've, I've, I've tried. Now the importance of the betch in Romanian culture is, is, is primordial, it's critical. This is where you store your winter food, this is where you would store your quinces, your apples, your uh, carrots, your potatoes, wine, garlic, onions, and uh, it's where we sto store our gogoshad and muratur. Now it took me a while to work out the difference, and I, I still I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the difference. Gogoshad are uh, arde in otset, so um, arde are peppers in otset in vinegar. And we put them in uh, uh, borkan, borkan. Uh, so in in jars. Now, I was confusing gogosha with arde kopt because arde kopt are are they which have been lightly grilled, I suppose, on the stove, and then this part of the skin is removed, and then they're put into a solution of either uh, vinegar or brine. Um, you've got a kind of arde which is good for this, arde capia, which is a, a longer, thinner arde uh, pepper, uh, as opposed to the arde gras, which you would um, otherwise eat. Uh, Romanian friends are amazed and outraged when I say, well, we, we just don't have these in, in, in the UK. Um, the only arde we have are bell peppers, which come in usually in packs of three. You'll get one yellow one, one red one, and one green one, and you buy them at a supermarket. And they've probably been grown in a, a greenhouse in Holland, and they are tasteless. These arde are full of taste, and uh, 
I, I, I like, I very much like Gugu Shad, I very much like Ardi Kops. The other type of uh, um, pickling we do, uh, Muratur. Muratur, uh, I, I think it originated from the fallen, not fruits, but the, the, the um, yeah, I suppose fruits, uh, tomatoes is, is, is a fruit, but um, Konopida cauliflower um, and muratur are a variety of mixed vegetables which all go into a brine and are pickled over the winter so it's more of a mix uh, gogoshar is just one single vegetable muratur would be a mix and they're stored in the vetch uh, okay the other problem I had was, I think when I first moved here, I was talking about Castravets, and um, my wife didn't really see the difference between a gherkin and a cucumber. Um, and we use gherkins in salads here, just as we would use cucumbers in, as, in salads in the UK. Uh, there is a difference. Um, uh, gherkin in Romanian would be castravetsior, and uh, cucumber would be castravetse, I, I believe. But you can correct me in the comments below if I've got that wrong. So they're from the same family, and they're used for the same purpose. But we tend to use more gherkins than cucumbers. Um, obviously, cucumbers in in the summer gherkins in the winter so uh the gherkins are put in otset uh, they're put in vinegar and they're pickled as well and they're absolutely a, a delicious accompaniment to to any meal okay my next uh, topic is uh, something which we just don't have in the uk uh, i don't want to be too morbid but is the subject of death and pomana Pomana means uh, really alms or giving, giving to the poor. And in England, um, if someone has the misfortune to die, well, you may have to wait um, one to two weeks to get a slot for a cremation, normally a cremation or a burial. Um, and the body will be held in a funeral parlour by a professional. Uh, here... Uh, funerals happen within three to four days, normally three days, even quicker sometimes. Um, and the pomana in, in England, the wake, the celebration of the dead person's life happens immediately after the funeral. And then that's it. It's over. It's done. Here, the system of pomana goes on for seven years. I believe seven years. Um, and it's a meal to celebrate the dead person immediately after the funeral, obviously. Then 40 days afterwards, something called parastas. Um, and then it goes on at varying periods, depending on what you want. Six months and 12 months intervals. And everyone who's connected with the uh, deceased will gather. Uh, food is given away both in the cemetery, to poor people, and to relatives. And you have to eat it. You have to eat it all because this food has been blessed by the priest, by the Orthodox priest. The highlight, I suppose, of the pomana is to eat the koliva, koliva which is the um, dessert served at such occasions. So the, the whole process goes on for about seven years, which maybe it's it's a good thing i'm 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 quite unsure i've i've got two connections with pomane um i i a relative of mine and a neighbor of mine so um i suppose it keeps them in your memory that's the idea uh whereas in england or the uk um once the wake is over that's it you're you're finished i talked about elections and Bars. We've got presidential elections coming up this Sunday. There probably won't be a, a, a winner because they won't have a majority because there are so many candidates. So we'll have a further round 
uh, a week later. Um, but all bars within 500 meters of the of the pooling booth, booths, which are uh, polling booths, which are usually in schools, um, will be closed. So the bars will be closed, and alcohol will not be on sale in supermarkets to stop things kicking off. I'll try to show some footage um, of uh, our front garden in front of the block because one of my neighbours has planted some lovely uh, trees, um, pomifer, and um, she's also planted some roses. Now, to look after these roses, what they do in Romania is they, they cut a, a water bottle, a large water bottle, in half and place it over the um, over the plant. That has two effects. It keeps the moisture in and it protects it from the snow. Now we don't really have snow here in Krajova because we're right in the south of the country. Um, so I think we got one day of snow last year. Uh, but it is getting cold and it protects the plants from the cold, from the extremes. Uh, I've never seen that before. I haven't seen it in the UK but it's something you will see in every front patch of garden in front of blocks and in everyone's garden they will put these water bottles over okay point nine uh, Trump uh, won his election and this this may have a knock-on effect uh, for us here in Romania I hope it won't and I, I remain optimistic um, but we have um, a big NATO presence in Romania because we're right on the border. We have 700 kilometers of border with Ukraine. Um, we have two large American bases. There's one here in Caracal and another one over in Constanza. So we can feel well protected as long as Trump doesn't mess about and withdraw from NATO. Um, one of the candidates for our presidential uh, contest, uh, Mircea Juna, was Deputy Secretary of uh, NATO, Secretary General of, of NATO. Um, and Johannes, the current president, has made great play of the links Romania has with NATO. But drones have come into Romanian territory over in Dobroja, and uh, it is it is a concern uh, that we are so close to the conflict um, so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, I hope that Trump will continue to support NATO um, because we do need uh, we do need that reinforcement here uh, finally um, internet speeds um, Romania has done extraordinarily well in uh, its internet uh, speeds it's currently it well you can argue about where where it ranks in Europe but it's um, the most recent um, review had us at a speed of 204.7 megabytes per second for download speed Spain beat uh, Romania with 205.1 there are no problems about um, internet speeds. We have 5G here. Um, everywhere you go, there is very acceptable internet. I, I'm, I say everywhere you go. I mean, I'm talking about towns and cities. Doubtless, if you go out into the um, countryside, you will have problems. Um, but uh, internet is, is one of the major strengths of Romania. So the mystery of why we can't do more things online uh, remains. Uh, that's not true of banks or paying your gas bill or your electricity bill, which we can do online. It's true of um, the civil service and uh, dealing with bureaucracy. So there we are. Ten more points about Romania, miscellanea. I hope you've enjoyed them. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. La Rivedere.